Hello and welcome to the fourth Stuck at Home Stanford Medicine Virtual Concert. Uh, I'm really so happy to be with you. We have a great lineup for you today. Let me just stop sharing my screen here. Uh, one second here. This is always the technical issue in the spotlight. There we go. Um, just a couple of um, tips for today. If you want to write some encouraging con comments for our performers, uh, please put them in the Q&A. Uh, not in the chat. Uh, the chat, we had some issues with the chat, so please put them in the Q&A, and then once uh, we can have moderated Q&A, and once we answer them, we can, uh, everyone can see them. Uh, the panelists, though, and the hosts, uh, myself and Jacqueline Genovese, uh, will be also directly broadcasting you through the chat. So if you're going to put a question or a comment in, please put it in the Q&A. Uh, otherwise, keep an eye on both channels. Um, so, Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to my co-host, the fabulous uh, Jacqueline Genovese, who is the Executive Director of the Medicine and the Muse program. Let me spotlight you. There you go. You're on mute. It's always the technical issues. Oh, there we go. I know. I know. Can, is, is that working now? It's working. We can hear you loud and clear, Jack. Oh, great. Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, thank you. I'm so excited. This is our fourth concert, and this has just been such a joy to get to know uh, so many of our colleagues and to hear from the community and from all of you who are tuning in. It's been really fun. Um, and one of the things I wanted to acknowledge um, not just this week, but in, in coming weeks too, is not only the uh, frontline healthcare professionals and the amazing things that they are doing, but also to, to just um, acknowledge the losses uh, for folks in terms of people who may have had an exhibit planned or a performance planned or a graduation. Um, that that's, um, This is a new time for us to readjust and to learn to maybe uh, do it do something a little differently so tonight we actually will have two folks who were um, one was going to have an art exhibit and another one was helping us to schedule a symphony um, so they will be presenting tonight um, i also just wanted to say i'm jealous that brian was able to have his hair cut because being sheltered in place my hair is a disaster um, jackie <laughs> corona cuts are standard because my wife's been cutting my hair for <laughs> Since we've known, almost since we, I mean, since we were engaged, definitely. So for years and years and years. So, you know, this is not a change in my activity. Yeah. Well, she does a great job, but thank you. And uh, hope you enjoy the evening. Thank you so much, uh, Jackie. Uh, we have a great lineup for you tonight. And again, uh, great thanks to Jackie for putting this together. Um, I'm going to ask a few questions as I have been doing, but please put all your supportive comments in the Q&A. Uh, we have first up uh, Jeffrey Kwong. He'll be playing, playing the cello, uh, the prelude to box suite number six in D major for solo cello. Jeffrey Kwong is a four out of year four out of five medical student uh, at Stanford and a master's student in epidemiology and clinical research. He currently serves as first cellist of the Stanford Philharmonia Orchestra and is graduate of the preparatory division of um, the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. Uh, so Jeffrey, thank you for joining us. And um, first question is, you know, I always like to start off with a question of what, what people are doing at home. Have you, have you had the chance to, since we're all cooking more than we are used to, uh, to eat or try to eat something new or to try something different? Yeah, so. Uh, the food? Yeah, so I'm at home in San Jose um, and I think uh, one of the fun things that I've eaten recently is we have some orange trees outside my house. Um, we don't often pick them, but we did recently and we made orange juice. Um, we have a few trees. There's only one that tastes good, I would say. Great. And uh, any, any, any uh, comments about what you're going to play today before you start? Yeah, so I'm going to play um, the Prelude to Box uh, Sixth Suite for solo cello. Bach had uh, six suites, so this is the last one. Um, and originally this piece was uh, composed for a cello with five strings, um, but the modern cello only has four. We're missing the highest string. So uh, this piece you'll see me using my thumb um, for, uh, for a lot of it. And then also 
Um, I picked this piece because um, it's a very triumphant type of uh, opening um, and ending, but somewhere in between it kind of uh, modulates into a lot of different um, tonalities that are far, far from the like home key of D major. So um, I felt it's appropriate for these times because right now we're in sort of a time when we don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel, but um, I feel this piece gives hope that eventually we'll find our way back to home, back to what normal might be. Thank you so much. Uh, just one comment. I may be echoing now because uh, we've had all the performers turn off their echo cancellation because it interferes with the uh, instrument uh, performance. So I apologize for that, but it's a little hard to adjust it on the fly. So you'll have to unfortunately put up with it uh, depending on the performer's uh, audio setup. So, but please, Jeffrey, take it away. Okay. Thank you. 
Fantastic. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, just a few comments, uh, many, many comments uh, from Tiffany Obayashi, a beautiful, uh, from Suchi Terras Togi. Uh, sorry if I'm butchering the pronunciations. Uh, Jeffrey Kwong, your music is an excerpt of heaven. Thank you so much for sharing with a smiley face. Uh, from Andrea Housel, uh, beautiful and hopeful. Uh, from, a, from Anonymous, Dang, you're good. Um, from Carolyn Horn, this is very inspiring for my daughter who is learning the cello. Thanks, great. Any inspiring words for the aspiring cellists out there? Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, I would say um, always find the opportunity to perform and um, it's platforms like these that let us uh, you know, play for other people and I think that's so rewarding. So. Um, so perform when you can. Perfect, thanks so much. Um, with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Jackie. Uh, she's going to, we're gonna change things up a little bit, make it uh, nice and fresh. Uh, we're gonna alternate uh, introducing our next uh, guest. So I'm gonna hand it over to Jackie. Yeah, we're gonna do our Regis and Kathy Lee thing here. Um, <laughs> but first, next up is Dr. Nina Suresh and her fiance Zane, and I wanna say first, uh, congratulations to them. They were just engaged. And I was so excited to learn they were going to perform a song from Frozen 2 because my grandson is currently obsessed with Frozen 2. Um, so, uh, I was going to ask you, you know, should we, should we get requests from your grandson? Maybe, actually, <laughs> maybe we should throw that out there. If you have any requests for <laughs> other performances, please put them in the Q&A and we will try our best uh, to, to fulfill your, your request. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, so Nina is a first year pediatric pulmonary fellow at the Children's Hospital and Zane is a teacher and a musician. Um, and he was visiting for spring break uh, from New York and fortunately is now uh, staying here. So um, I will ask the question that <laughs> Brian asked about um, if you've eaten or cooked something um, unusual or new in this quarantine time. Oh, we've been cooking a lot. Cooking I, up a storm. I will yeah. say Zane's doing most of the cooking, um, but we did make a flourless chocolate cake recently, which was delicious. Mm -hmm. Ooh, flourless. Kind of with uh, baked eggs, like frittatas, just like putting a hodgepodge of veg veggies, and I'm, I'm big on my frittatas, yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. And the flourless chocolate cake, that's really rich. So the song you all are singing is All, all Is Found. Mm -hmm. Is that right? By uh, yes. Casey Musgrave. Okay, take it away. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me just suppress the background noise here. We just thought this here. would be, uh, it's a very meaningful song during this time period. So that was our inspiration and being brave and trying something new. Yes. Mm. Sleep 
my darling, safe and sound. For in this river, all is found. All is found. Is this a uh, is this a prerequisite to getting married? You have to be able to sing together, play oh, yeah. together. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fifty years from now, you look at the recording and like that's the secret to a happy marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. So uh, many, many, many comments. Um, I think we're getting backed up. I like this one from Nadia. What a gorgeous couple. Goals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Mira Suresh. Beautiful people. I did not know this doctor could sing. All in caps. <laughs> like this all in caps uh let's see here great sound i love it from my seven-year-old daughter uh edith star so beautiful i love the arrangement anonymous uh smiley emoji with hearts in the eyes whatever that's called uh god it's like eight times uh this is awesome thank you so for, so much for sharing your talents great Thank you so much. Really appreciate you sharing your talents and uh, your, uh, you know, great best wishes for you for the future. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Thank you. So, so uh, Jackie, um, we've got up next. Fantastic. Uh, you know, we've got all these families. What did you think when we started getting all these requests from families to perform? You know, I was so excited because I grew up in a family of eight children and we had to choose between sports and music. And so the more children can play music, I think the better. And um, I just thought it was so great. And I think a lot of families now under quarantine have time to play together, which is something they maybe didn't before. So um, really excited and it's just so much fun to meet the children. There you go. So is that true? Did, did the do you do you the D'Souza family, uh, they're Evangeline and Christian D'Souza, ages twelve and ten. Uh, Evangeline will be playing the piano Havana by Camila Cabello, 
Uh, and Christian will be playing the drums, Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. Um, Evangeline, I Evangeline, Evangeline loves arts, crafts, and music, also loves cooking, and, they're, and this quarantine time is teaching her life skills. Christian loves any athletic activity, math and reading. He also, he's also learning and life skills at this time, learning life skills at this time. Their mom, uh, Dr. Genevieve D'Souza, is clinical associate professor and director of Pediatric Anesthesi Anesthesia Resource Center, Park for the Department of Anesthesi Anesthesiology, Perioperative and Pain Medicine. Um, so is it true that is the quarantine, uh, this stuck at home, has that uh, enabled you to perform together uh, more often? Yeah. 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 Great. Um, any, it's a little hard to hear you. You may have to step closer to, to, in terms of the voice. I know we had to have you pull back because the, the, the instruments are so uh, powerful. Um, any, are you guys cooking for your parents? Um, yeah. Two weeks ago, I made Nutella cheesecake and I, it was really good. Nutella cheesecake. You know, I'm going to take that as payment for my hosting duties. <laughs> so I'm going to expect that once this is all over, I'm going to expect a box of Nutella cheesecake. Oh, is it a deal? <laughs> There's Nutella cheesecake and brownies and every kind of dessert being baked almost every other day. So you're oh. welcome. Wow. Wow. That's great. So uh, please take it away. I believe we're going to have Evangeline first. And, and Brian, I just wanted to say Evangeline is actually going to play Fandango. Oh, um, sorry. I have the old version. I'm Paul. Yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're versatile. Changes on the fly. <laughs> Fantastic. That's amazing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my, my, uh, let's see here. Um, so very sweet. Congratulate. Oh, sorry. This is, I'm, I'm off. I'm offset on my comments. I, I scrolled too back. So she's really good uh, with many, many exclamation points. Oh my gosh, for the Fandango, you're playing out of the same book I used to use in my piano lessons when I was in school. This is such a treat. Uh, thanks for brightening my day with your talents. I would also like to put in a request for Nutella cheesecake. I think you can have a Nutella cheesecake business. Yeah. Uh, let's see, asterisk standing ovation erupts. A very beautiful piano piece. Great job, awesome piano playing. Yay, Evangeline. Uh, great, uh, great job, beautiful, love it. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. And now you can start a cheesecake business. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So next up is your brother, Christian, playing uh, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Is that right, Jackie? Am I, am I up to date with that? That is correct. Okay. <laughs>
lot of the rock on. So I didn't know there was this emoji. <laughs> there's a wow, you're awesome, rock on. Uh, cool drum set, future rock star, keep it up. Great job. Uh, watch out Keith Moon from The Who. We got a new rocker here. Uh, Genevieve, message for the mom. Genevieve, so lovely to see your kids and their fantastic talent. He rocks. Uh, he's spot on with his timing. Oh, this is a very big compliment. Uh, great drum roll at the chorus. Good job. So fantastic. We were dancing the whole time. Rock on. Thank great. You. Fantastic work. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't kidding about the uh, Nutella cheesecake. <laughs> I had to be head taster. Oh, that's a great job. Very smart. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Jackie will take it over and introduce Nick Love. Great. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you can see me right now, but I wanted to switch to this background just for a minute because um, Nick was supposed to have an art exhibit in Li Kaxing, our medical school building, his final art exhibit as a medical student. And um, sadly, that we had to postpone that. So I was just so excited that he was able to join us to show us just a tiny part of what that exhibit would have been. And I'm just going to read the description real quick and then um, hear what Nick is cooking for himself and then, and then have him talk about his art. Um, this is the triptych. The works have been two years in the making and were inspired by the history of Stanford and were partially constructed by the greater Stanford community. Nick, in addition to um, finishing up his MD degree, is also a PhD, and he will be beginning a transitional year in dermatology residency in June. And his artwork, um, you can find his artwork at www.love artsciencemedicine.com. I love that name, Nick. Um, but do you want to answer the eating question first and then talk about your art? I've been going through a pie phase recently, actually. I've been eating a lot of apple pie. Homemade? Are you, uh, you know, where is you have a preferred uh, place to buy it from? So I've tested, like, you know, Molly Stone's on Calab, but I think actually the Whole Foods pies are the best. Ah, I'll have to check it out. Very good. So, um, yes, uh, welcome to my studio apartment studio, where I have about um, uh, two years of works that we're going to take up the whole first floor and third floor. I have them in like a 400 square foot apartment. And the, the piece I want to show you today is a triptych. Um, and it's all about Stanford, and I guess I wanted to use this opportunity to sort of like give back and thank Stanford um, for my time. It's been an amazing time here. And I guess I was really intrigued about it, Stanford, especially its history. And I think everyone here knows the history of Stanford. Um, if you don't, I'll just really summarize some of the things that I've taken away about Stanford. Um, Governor Leland Stanford bought the land that is now Stanford campus from a really crazy French guy named Jean Philippe who changed his name to Peter Coots. So you may be aware of Peter Coots Road on, on one side of the campus. And um, Leland Stanford made a lot of money in various ventures, including the railroad. And he was married to Jane Stanford and they went 18 years childless marriage until they had their first and only child, Leland Stanford Jr whom during his uh, teens, when he was 15, as rich people would do, they went, to, they went to Europe. And they went to Europe and in Athens he got sick and in Italy he died. So one of the craziest things to me about Stanford, and I think about this sometimes, is number one, how awful the journey back from Europe must have been on a boat, coming, not coming back with your, your only child. And then number two, what would it have hap what would happen if that didn't happen would we even have stanford university oh. probably not because the the university was founded in 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 um sort of memory of their son how would how would our country be different how would our own personal lives be different if that act didn't happen so i i like um i like that aspect where stanford university has a history and it's a there's a lot of other interesting things that happened after the founding 
but then we all have our own personal histories. So I thought it was kind of cool because I'm from Michigan. I was living in Japan when I interviewed for medical school at Stanford. And then I came to Stanford. And I think everyone in this audience has a personal history where you made a choice. For example, maybe you chose the job at Stanford versus the job at some other university. Or maybe you came to Stanford University instead of some other university. So I like that we have our own history that's somehow in intertwined with uh, Stanford. So I wanted to make a piece to reference Stanford's history, my own personal history, of my gratitude for Stanford. And the last thing is that I wanted to try to make a piece that I gave, I lost control and I gave control to the Stanford community to help build that piece. So I'm gonna show you three pieces that, that tie into this, this uh, idea. I have to bring you around. So the first piece is this one. So what I've done here is in the background, I have this collage of actually the parts of Asia I visited before coming to Stanford. And at that time I was, I was liking to do a lot of map collages. And what I did is I wanted to combine it with this idea of, of reflecting Stanford. So I have the Hoover Tower here, and I have, I have Stanford uh, memorabilia here. And then here are the Stanfords. So in, in my opinion, the most interesting character is Jane Stanford, because Jane Stanford actually, she really uh, made the university her, her baby, so to speak. She was strangely, she was actually poisoned in Hawaii. That's how she, that's how she died. And uh, here's Leland Stanford Jr. and here's Stanford. So I like the interaction here between this tower um, in, in Yangon and then, and then Hoover Tower too, showing you the sort of like cross-cultural tower building activity that humans do. Okay, so then I wanted to make something bigger. So I made this. So the history behind this is that at a f festival, I built this map. And I had people come to this map and then just place a dot wherever they wanted to go, had been, liked their food. There was no rules. And it's so interesting to look at this now because you think to yourself, in this COVID era, it's unbelievable that we were just allowed a throng of people to gather in the thousands and have our, our, our germs exchange freely like this. And um, Anyways, you kind of get the picture. So about four hours, I had people at Stanford just place these random colored dots on this map. So what I've done in this piece here is that I, I literally have the history of the creation of the, this piece, the canvas, the map, and then the construction of the map. And then paralleling that, I have the Hoover Tower, but I have the Stanfords, because the whole story, story starts with the Stanfords. And I have some things from Stanford that you may not know, actually. Did you know that in the main quad, there was a huge Arc de Triomphe? The, um, the church also had a spire, and uh, these actually knocked down during the earthquake in the early 20th century. I also have the, uh, the new hospital construction, and another thing that I find just fascinating is, um, I find it fascinating that Lake Lago was actually once a lake and there were people swimming and going windsurfing in there every day. So the thing about this piece is that now that the COVID era has kind of hit, it just feels a little different to me because all those dots kind of look like the spread of a virus. So I don't actually know where this piece is going. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to change this thank, cover it up with pictures of the quad and I'm going to put at Stanford instead, because I, I like the idea that, that personally I experienced the COVID-19 while I was at, at Stanford. So the final piece is this. So basically I wanted to give something, uh, just saying my thanks to every, everyone that I've, I've interacted with. Um, and because I came from Japan, I have the, the symbols here of arigato, 
which is thank you, also known as thank you in, in, in English. And um, yeah, I like these little corners too that I made. The reflective nature. Anyways, yeah. That's it. Fantastic, Nick. That's so great. Really appreciate you sharing your art with us. Uh, this, you know, there were several articles today about uh, museums trying to figure out what to do, art museums, about how to share the art. And I think no better way to hear from the artist. Uh, a couple of comments. Uh, uh, wow, amazing. When I grow up, I want to be an artist. Uh, pretty, awesome, love it. Congratulations. This is from Audrey, I assume Audrey Schaefer. Um, congratulations, Nick, on your many accomplishments, including beautiful, thoughtful, exciting art. Love the studio apartment art studio. What a fantastic dermatologist you will be. You are already a great. Uh, the history and your art are fascinating. I can't wait to see your artworks in person one day in LKSC. Uh, nice to hear about the history and love your map. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Clark, Thank you. Uh, fascinating journey through history, society, medicine, geography, and architecture. Quite a social emotional experience. Great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time today. I just well, wanted to say, me. Nick, I hope maybe you'll teach too in the future. I don't know if, I think you'd be yeah. fabulous. Um, in addition to being a full-time doctor and an artist, I think you'd be a fabulous teacher as well. Well, please uh, hire me someday here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk to the Dean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, thanks so much, Nick. Uh, Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, next up, we have Juliana Barada uh, playing the alto saxophone, and we'll be playing Take Five. Uh, Juliana is originally from Rochester, New York. She has received a, a MS from Stanford in Community Health and Prevention Research and is part of the Presence Five team. You guys have been great supporters of our uh, concert series. Uh, Presence Five fosters humanism between patients and providers. Uh, in her free time, she plays jazz saxophone with the Stanford Afro-Latin Jazz Ensemble uh, in the pre-COVID-19 BC before COVID, uh, and uh, makes Brigadario, aka Brazilian Fudge, and watches The Office with Gilmore Girls. So tell us about the fudge. Uh, yeah, uh, Brigadeiro. It's a uh, basically Brazilian fudge. Um, it's super easy to make. It's only three ingredients. Uh, you know, happy to send along the recipe for anyone who's interested. It's very delicious if you have a sweet tooth like me. Wow, yeah, you're gonna have to send us the recipe. We, we can put it in the, uh, in the next email out. <laughs> Sounds good. Great. Great. And, uh, what, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you'll be playing? I think people will recognize it when they hear it. Yeah, uh, Take Five is a jazz standard, uh, you know, by Paul mm -hmm. Desmond, alto saxophone player, and originally recorded with the Dave Brubeck Quartet. And I chose this piece because, you know, I really like the 5-4 that it's in, super unique. And uh, because I'm part of the Presence 5 team, I thought it would be a good play on that with Take 5. So yeah, I'm happy to play for you guys. Fantastic, thank you. Thank 
Was amazing that's like a workout for your lungs god how, how long have you been playing i've been playing since i was nine years old and uh, so now i'm 24 a couple wow wow yeah it's great see that's covid protection right there you got to have strong lungs you could beat anything definitely it was between music and sports but i think this combines the two <laughs> <laughs> athletic you're an a musical uh, sport. <laughs> many, many comments. Go, Juliana. You're incredible. Love your Presence 5 team. From Gabby Lee. Yay, Juliana. Excited to hear you play. Uh, Presence 5 here to support. Um, I know take anonymous attendee. I know take five. It's really hard and good. If you can play it, you're really good. Smiley face, <laughs> smiley face, smiley face. Uh, from M. Fujimoto, Juliana, so nice to hear the saxophone, like the tune, thank you for playing. Uh, let's see here. You can't get cooler than the sax, gal, Juliana, from Carl Sinobet, Sinobet? Uh Awesome and thank you. Um, and oh, does, does jazz, does playing jazz sax invite any comparison to Lisa Simpson? Ooh, yes it does, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Many people have called me Lisa Simpson. <laughs> the coolness factor, you know, of the sax is almost above any other instrument, I would say. Uh, and then from maybe somebody you're related to, Brenda Bove Barada. Yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> there you go. I'll end it with that. Beautiful. Love it. Uh -huh. Thank you, everyone, for the wonderful comments. Really Great. Appreciate. Thank you. And th thank you for joining us. And next up, uh, Jackie's going to... Uh, uh, it will um, introduce Lynn, who's a, is it, are you, is she a three time? Was she a three time or two time? Two time. Two time. Yeah, two time. And again, I'm going to change my background for Lynn because this is where we were going to have the symphony at the Haymarket Theater at Palo Alto High School, which if you haven't been to it, it's a beautiful theater. 
Um, and Lynn and Dr. Han Jae Wang from cardiology, they were helping us get together a symphony. We had about 40 Stanford uh, physician musicians ready to play. And so that got postponed. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge that and acknowledge Lynn's efforts and Han Jae's efforts. And hopefully we will, we will get back to that. Um, so Lynn uh, completed her anesthesia, anesthesia residency last year and is currently finishing her fellowship. While an undergrad at Stanford, she studied violin with Jeff Nuttall of the St. Lawrence String Quartet. And her chamber music uh, group was coached by Deborah Fong and Chris Costanza, past performance on this concert. She also plays a traditional Chinese instrument called the Eru. So uh, Lynn, I will ask the question about if you are cooking anything uh, unusual or exciting during this uh, Yeah. Um... We've been cooking a lot. My husband's been baking a lot of sourdough bread, um, which seems to be a quarantine staple these days. But with the extra starter yeast that you have left over, you can make a bunch of breakfast foods such as sourdough pancakes, Dutch babies. Um, so it's been a lot of really good carbs. <laughs> What's a Dutch baby? I had it's like, um, I had to look it up the first time I had it too, but it's like a light fluffy sourdough pancake. Ooh. Not necessarily sourdough, but yeah, yeah you can get in a cast iron food, pan. Right, and then it shrinks down. Uh, you'll have to ask him. Find <laughs> 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 <You can't laughs> flour. Flour's hard to find now. You yeah, that's true. Flour. That's true. And and Lynn, you're going to play a Bach sonata, and I just wasn't sure of the specific. Yeah. Um. So. I'll be playing a mellow interlude um, between those really exciting performances. Um, Bach wrote six sonatas and partitas for solo violin, which are part of the core repertoire for violinists. Um, and I'm going to be playing the first movement of the first violin sonata. And I realized that I first started learning this piece 20 years ago. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it doesn't oh, get easier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fabulous. Well, thank you so much. You were five years old. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not five years old, but close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
this ah oh, geez look at all these comments uh that there we go <laughs> my cat <laughs> your, yeah exactly love, <laughs> love your violin playing thanks to the performance so moving beautiful playing and a beautiful cat uh, beautiful <laughs> love it this piece is so technically difficult yet you pull it off with such ease and deep emotion stunning um i have goosebumps this is absolutely gorgeous uh, Lynn, you are so inspiring. Fantastic comments. And yeah, your cat is uh, very popular. Look at this. Fantastic. <laughs> Can we get a Stanford Medical Symphony together virtually? Oh my gosh, yes. Thank you for the shout out. We should definitely get that happening. Um, we're still planning to do it later in the fall, hopefully, um, or early next year. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And Thanks, next Lynn. up we have Tamara Dunn. Let's see, where are you? There you go. Um, so Tamara is a second time performer uh, and she will be singing At Last by Etta James, who's a personal favorite of mine. Uh, clinical assistant professor in hematology and uh, program director for hematology fellowship, co-chair of diversity and inclusion council. She has performed at various shows in Kansas City, New York, Stanford, Palo Alto, as well as singing for Stanford graduation and the national anthem at a KC Royals game while a medical student, Tamara sang in Carnegie Hall. So first question before we get to the food, do you sing to your patients? Absolutely, every, every time I um, have a birthday for one of my patients, I always sing them happy birthday. Oh, amazing, amazing, I love that. Uh, so what's, what's, what's cooking in your household, anything new? Nothing that I'm cooking. Um, <laughs> I didn't say you're cooking. I said, what's in the household? <laughs> um, my husband's doing a lot of great cooking recently. Um, anything from short ribs to great burgers and homemade fries, fajitas, lots of variety. And then there's some DoorDash happening as well. <laughs> Are the kids doing any, uh, they're just tasting or any, any requests from the kids? The kids are actually wanting to help out a lot. So that's nice. Oh, great. Um, they definitely helped with the fajitas and they helped with chicken parmesan. Great. More, more to clean up though, right? That was messy. It was very messy. <laughs> I recommend that. Great. Well, thank you again for joining us a second time. I hope you keep coming back. Thanks uh, for having me. Take it away. Okay. Had My love has come along 
my lonely days are over and life is like a song yes it is oh, oh. at last the skies above are blue my heart was wrapped in clover the night i looked at you i found a dream that i could speak to a dream that i can call my own i found a thrill to hold my cheek to a thrill that i had never known oh yeah you smile and then the spell was cast For here we are in heaven. For you are mine. Fantastic. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Many, many comments. Let's see here. I love your voice. Your voice is so beautiful. I would pay for concert tickets. What? You think? <laughs> love that. There Thank you, you go. Thank That's you. Your second so is your moonlighting there. <laughs> uh, great job, Tamara, uh, from Amy Alexander. Uh, you have an angel's voice. Thank you for sharing it with us. What a privilege it is to hear it. Um, beautiful performance. I had goosebumps. Four clapping hands emojis. Uh, great voice. Happy World Voice Day. Is that today? I didn't even know. Well, that would be so cool. <laughs> didn't know. That, uh, that was incredible. Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing and I hope you come back. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. I'll meet myself by the way. Did you switch to me? Sorry, yes. Jack. Oh, okay. okay. I wasn't. Tony, uh, who is our repeat performer, another repeat performer. Before we do that, though, I have to ask Zane, what did you just eat there? I saw you're eating some tasty noodles or something. I unmuted you. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it's, I just made some uh, seared tuna with on top of some salad. Delicious. Ah. Ooh, that sounds good. good. That sounds really good. So am I introducing? I'm just hungry, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Here, well, yes, that, was just a, that was just a sidebar. Yeah. If I had a background, um, I should have thought of this for Matias. It would be Argentina because he has family there. We had talked about Italy. I have family in Italy. He has family in Argentina. Um, of course, we were worried about everybody, obviously, that we're working with, but also many of us have extended family in the country. Um, but we wanted to end with Matthias tonight because he's um, going to be singing a medley of Simon Garfunkel and James Taylor, including You've Got a Friend. And uh, Matthias is a pediatric surgeon and he um, has a group called Midnight Rounds that hopefully when, um, that we'll see in person at some point, we figure out also maybe how to do it. So uh, Matthias, for the question for the food, in terms of either that you're eating or cooking during this time? Well, I'm, I'm eating a lot, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think we're trying to get creative. My wife's doing most of the work. I try to barbecue every now and then. Um, I got into a discussion with my youngest son the other day because uh, he thinks DoorDash is a restaurant. <laughs> and, uh, 
and he wants food from DoorDash, you know, <laughs> and uh, so we're trying to get creative and see, you know, we do take out a couple of times a week, try, try to, you know, please the little one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that was funny. But uh, uh, I think there was just great performers today. It's just amazing. I mean, the talent, real musicians. So um, I'm just the filler here. <laughs> and I, I don't know if you want to say the, the, the four songs. That yeah, so this is um, James Taylor and Simon Garfunkel, I think are one of my two favorite artists. Um, and uh, I, I've always dreamed to, you know, uh, see them. I was able to see James Taylor. I couldn't see Simon Garfunkel, unfortunately. Uh, and I usually sing these with Raji, so you, you'll notice something missing very quickly. <laughs> and, uh, so if it doesn't sound very good, it's just because of that. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try and see what you guys think. Thank you. Take it away. Let's see. I'm sitting in a railway station, got a ticket for my destination. Um, on a tour of one night stand, my suitcase and guitar in hand. And every stop is neatly planned for a poet out of one man band. Homeward bound. I wish I was homeward bound. Home, where my thoughts escaping home, where my music's playing home. Where my love lies waiting silently for me Every day is an endless stream of cigarettes and magazines mm -hmm. And each town looks the same to me The movies and the factories And every stranger's face I see Reminds me that I long to be Homeward bound I wish I was Homeward bound nah, nah, nah. Home Where my thoughts escaping Home Where my music's playing Home Where my love life's waiting Silently for me Silently for me darkness my old friend I've come to talk with you again because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping and the vision that was planted in my brain still sound of silence and the people bow and pray to the neon god they made and the sign flashed out its warning in the word that it was for me and the sign said the words of the prophets are written on a subway wall, tenement hall, and whispered in the sound. When you're down and troubled, and you need a helping. Just call out my name And you know wherever I am 
I'll come running just as fast as I can to see you again. Oh, babe, don't you know that winter, spring, summer, or fall? All you've got to do is call, and I'll be there. Yes, I will. In my mind, I'm going to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Can you just feel the moonshine? Oh, ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind? Oh, I'm going to Carolina in my mind. Karen, she's the silver sun. Best walk away and watch her shine. Watch her, watch the morning come. A silver tear appearing now, and I'm crying. And I, I'm going to Carolina in my mind. And with a holy host of others standing around me. Still I'm on the dark side of the moon And it looks like it goes on like this forever You must forgive me If I'm up and gone to Carolina In my mind I'm going to Carolina in my mind because I'm already gone. I'm going to say nice things about me because I'm gone. You gotta carry on without me. Yes, I'm gone and I'm going to Carolina. In my mind, oh. yes, I'm going to Carolina in my mind. Thank you. Fantastic as always this um so glad dr brazoni is back what a great way to round out an awesome evening thank you jacqueline and medicine in the muse wow what a great voice and love james taylor selections what fun to all be connected just wish just wish i had some talent to share uh, wonderful renditions of classic favorites thank you for sharing bravo matthias better start making those business cards for event musician for hire <laughs> song and surprises uh, from one of your fellow performers, so uh, from Lynn, so awesome, love the medley, seamless transitions. I want to buy the soundtrack. So there you go. You've got a, another, you. another person with a second career. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank no, you. Well, thanks for the invite. That, that, was, that was a lot of fun to watch, and, and, and thanks for letting us participate. That was great. No, we hope you come back and perform. Um, you know, and on that note, please, to anyone watching out there, please come email Jackie, uh, jmgeno at stanford dot jmgeno at stanford dot edu. Did I get that right, right, Jackie? Yes, that is correct. Yes. So, so are you looking for performers or what, what, when should they expect uh, next week, the following week, the, the Asian performance we have on April? We're, right. We, well, we're pretty full, but I, but I want people to keep um, sending because I believe we're going to be continuing to do this. So next week, um, I, I mean, I don't want to discourage anybody, but because I think we'll be able to fit everybody in. And then April 30th, we are doing the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Health Awareness Month kickoff. And so music that celebrates those traditions or um, instruments, um, if uh, folks want to participate, they can let me know um as well great 
I mean, we, it may not be next week, but it may be a following week. So that's, I think, a great place. Right, yeah, so let me know. And actually, some people who have contacted me, they can't, they can't do certain weeks, so that's great. And if I can, you know, know ahead of time, that's even better. Great, and thank, thank you all for joining us today. I'm gonna uh, give a couple of shout outs. Please, you know, the food was the theme of the day. Please support your local businesses. You know, unfortunately, there may be a lot of restaurants and other local businesses going out of business. Um, so all you can do to support them, I heard a great idea from my wife. Uh, there was a suggestion that, you know, you know, if you've got a hairdresser talking about Corona cuts, you know, maybe if your uh, local business offers a gift certificate, uh, you know, you could buy it now uh, instead of waiting till later. Um, so there are all these opportunities to support your local businesses and hopefully uh, you know, we'll get the world back a little bit more uh, so that it's uh, helpful for everybody. Um, so please, thank you for tuning in. And uh, if you need, I know we get a lot of requests for links to the recording. Uh, please email us and we can send you a private link. We can't send a public link because, you know, there's copyright issues in the songs, but we can send you a private link as well. So hope to see you next week. Thanks so much. We see a guitar there, Brian. We, we got to listen to you play one of these days. Yeah, mine is terrible. So maybe if you were playing right next to me, I could fake it. I can air guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thanks so much. We'll see you guys next week.